Depending on the religion you follow, heaven, hell, punishment, and reward seem to look a little bit different in each of them. But when we talk about supernatural creatures that plague humanity, there's one that definitely gets mentioned. Demons. Demons and devils constantly mess with the mortal realm and trick innocent individuals into either selling their souls, being physically harmed, or just committing sins that will lead them to eternal damnation after they die. So the smart way to go about them would be to never meddle. Now we all know what eternal means. It's being subjected to torture in one of the seven layers of hell. And there, on one of the throws, you'll meet Asmodeus, a truly troublesome and mischievous lord of hell. And the problem is that he's one of those few down there who have the power to do almost anything they want. An embodiment of lust and wrath, this demon is responsible for torturing, kidnapping, stealing, impersonating, and murdering all he comes across. So there's no stopping him when he has his mind set on something or if he's angry. In today's video, we intend to show you just how this demon destroyed the lives of many, how some survived, and ultimately why you must never trust such an evil being. Come and watch as we reveal the shocking truth behind the demon that is Asmodeus. The origin of this demon can be traced to an ancient Eastern Iranian tribe where the name Asmodeus or Asmodai is said to have represented the term for wrath. But as angry as he is, he's also a huge coward when faced by those of higher authority than him, like angels. He was known to cower behind the women he possessed when faced by the consequences of his actions. A similar being also makes an appearance in the Bible, where in 2 Kings 17, it's revealed that some of the exiled people of Israel who settled in Assyria began to worship false gods, one of which was Ashima, who some believed to be Asmodeus. Other than these minor accounts, the main story concerning this evil demon comes from apocryphal texts scattered around the non-canonical world. One of such is the Book of Tobit, a biblical text in relation to the righteous but long-suffering man living in Nineveh, who was blinded by birds' droppings. On one occasion, Tobit sends his son to retrieve some money he's owed from a relative far away in Ecbatana. On this journey, the son comes across the archangel Raphael, who was disguised in human form as he was instructed by God to protect this young man during his journeys. And while some of you might wonder why someone would need one of the most powerful angels to protect him, we'd soon find out why. Soon they meet said relative and his daughter Sarah, who Tobias, Tobit's son, falls in love with. Although he's eager to marry her, he's made aware of a life-threatening issue. Anytime Sarah gets married and lies with her husband, that husband dies immediately as a curse put on the woman by the demon Asmodeus. Some speculated that his obsession with Sarah is what made him place this curse on her. So basically, if he cannot have her, nobody can. Despite this, Tobias was indignant about his wishes to marry Sarah, so Raphael advised him not to consummate his marriage on the wedding night. Instead, he's to place the heart and liver of a giant fish that they had captured over hot coals. This would break the curse Asmodeus placed on the poor woman, as Asmodeus would be forced to flee from the burned organs. It worked, and as a result, not only does Asmodeus flee from the scene, he's captured by the archangel Raphael after catching up with him in Egypt, where the spirit is eventually bound. In other texts, such as the Talmud, he's referred to as Asmodai, which can be translated to evil spirit or demon. Although he may not be as lethal as he is in the Book of Tobit, he's still a force to be reckoned with, and those who underestimate him will learn to never make this mistake as they quake in fear of his return. In the Talmudic stories, he's captured by King Solomon when the king was trying to build his temple in dedication to God. After consulting his rabbis, they decided that the best way to complete his wonder was to obtain the Nexian stone, a stone that is mostly used in vests worn by the high priests of the time. They revealed that the right way to obtain it was to consult with demons who would know where to find such a precious stone. After binding several demons, they all revealed that Asmodai, the prince of demons, was the only one who knew where to get this Nexian stone. Once they point him out to the mountain where he gets water, 
Solomon sends Benaiah to capture him, which proves to be successful as he managed to get him inebriated before binding him in chains that beheld the name of God on them. Such was the wrath of Asmodai that when he stirred back into consciousness, he set ablaze all the houses and trees that they came across as Benaiah dragged him back to Solomon. During this long haul back to Solomon, this creature is not just a vengeful or lustful being as it shows a range of emotional complexities. As they continue to journey, he puts a blind man back on the right path once he saw that he had missed his direction. Following this, he cries when he sees a group of people having a good time. Next, he bursts into laughter when he overhears a man asking a shoemaker to make him a pair of shoes that would last for seven years before finally almost keeling over in laughter after spotting a holy man asking for lost bread. So, to say the least, this being did have emotion. Eventually, he's dragged before Solomon after waiting in captivity for three days. Ignoring the taunting, Solomon manages to drag information from Asmodai as to where the next stones are. After a long, drawn-out mission that has Solomon's men on a mission to find and trick a bird who knew where the stones were, the men are able to retrieve the stones. Regardless, Asmodai finds he's still imprisoned even afterward. There he reveals the true reasons for his actions while he was being dragged to Solomon. He revealed he only helped the blind man because he knew that the man was righteous and anybody who helped him would receive a portion in the world to come, showing it was only for selfish reasons, not of the goodness of his heart. He also revealed that he found the man's request for shoes that would last for seven years funny because he was going to die in seven days. It was also funny to observe the holy man searching for food because he knew that there was treasure fit for a king right underneath him. However, he also reveals some empathy towards a couple where the groom was going to die soon after the wedding party. The widow will be forced to marry his brother, who was a mere child. Asmodai is then kept captive even after the temple is complete. However, one day, Solomon visits him in his cell and asks him to reveal his true power. Asmodai states that he can only do this if Solomon gives him his signet ring and undoes his chains. For someone so heralded as being so wise, Solomon foolishly complies. Unsurprisingly, the world is thrown into chaos when Asmodai flexes his wings fully, which sends Solomon flying 400 miles away from his kingdom, where even though he miraculously survives, he's rendered into becoming a beggar until he finds his way home. During the three years it takes him to get there, Asmodai takes his revenge by sleeping with all of Solomon's wives and even his mother, only to flee once Solomon returns. Traumatized by the event, Solomon feared the return of Asmodai till the end of his days, keeping soldiers around in fear of the night. Several other accounts attest to the dark and evil nature of this demon, with similar tales of the demon either acting out of his lust or anger. What is clear is that all that come across this demon may not even be aware of the curse or the true power of this entity. If there is anything to learn from this video, it's that Asmodeus is no friend of mankind at all. Well, that's all for today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can be notified about our next videos. Trust me, you don't want to miss any of that.